Canon Dancer Osman arrives on the Nintendo Switch and this, it's a 90s arcade release, finally seeing a home release, but is it now worth your time and cash? Well that's what I'm here to find out in today's review. My name's Alex, so this is Switch Corner, let's get started. If you enjoy the video today, consider subscribing for reviews, deals, news and lists daily, helps out the channel a huge amount. Canon Dancer Osman is a cult classic Japanese video game released in 1996 that can be considered a spiritual successor to Strider. Now it was originally only released in arcades, but has now been released on consoles. The game is set in the near future of the 21st century, where the world is controlled by a corrupt government and threatened by an evil sorceress named Abdullah the Slaver. As a skilled martial arts fighter, Kirin, we offer our services as a weapons for hire agent to defeat enemy forces. Our mission leads us to infiltrate the city and take down the enemy, however once inside their cult temple we are trapped, we are attacked by the police force and here we are left to die. Now thanks to our strength we do manage to break free from imprisonment and we set out now on a new mission, that is getting revenge against the affairs director who hired us initially. Along the way expect to encounter a slew of other characters who have their own reasons for wanting us dead and overall of the story I would say Despite being a short arcade-like experience, the storyline is quite convoluted for such a simple premise. Cannon Dancer Osman includes two different builds of the game, Cannon Dancer, the original Japanese release, then Osman, the English language translation. It's unclear why the English release received a weaker title, but it's still great to see both versions are included. Now I played the Osman build, which includes a brief tutorial, definitely helps you quickly get up to speed with its free button action. This includes a basic attack, as well as a jump, and then also a special attack. Now to pull off a special attack, we do need to collect the required pickups displayed in the lower left of the screen. This tutorial though is definitely a helpful addition that makes it easy to learn the controls and the mechanics of the game. Alongside the basic controls, the player can also slide across the floor and many of the character's abilities here are automatic such as wall climbing, hanging from roofs and firing ourselves off of projectiles that are scattered around each location. Sprinting is also automatic as the player gradually and continuously moves in a single direction. Initially this led to a sense that the game is quite slow but once the player gets used to the mechanics, definitely fits the action well. It's easy to appreciate why this game has been long requested for a console release it's just incredibly responsive and the over-the-top level design and animations create a great sense of power and the movement. The interesting location design as well often requires the players to scale upwards as much as they do move left to right. It's worth noting that Cannon Dancer is incredibly challenging and one can expect to die here constantly, however being a modern port it offers several helpful assists. Players can load the game up with 9 quarters and try to survive this world at a basic level. Alternatively though, they can rewind with the left trigger and fast forward with the right. Additionally, on top of this, then, the game now features save states, and to top it off, players can dig into the options menu, where they will find the ability to turn on cheats and enhancements. Cheats include invincible mode, time freeze, unlimited specials, full of power at all times, and unlimited HP. Enhancements then include a double jump, invincible jump, invincible slide, and invincible attack. I particularly like these enhancements as they add modern invincibility frames, and that changes up the entire strategic approach. Approach. The gameplay of Cannon Dancer Osman is great fun though, the futuristic setting leads to a lot of creative elements and especially the enemies, from generic foot soldiers to godlike enemies and creatures, as well as just simple obstacles to avoid such as futuristic vehicles that seem to be falling from the sky and they are now barreling towards you. Although the game is short as well with just the six stages, it features plenty of boss encounters, each well designed to challenge what the player has learned about the game this far, from scaling the world around them to quickly navigate a path that is crumbling beneath your feet. However, towards the end of the game it may feel a little cheap as it asks the player to revisit many of these encounters. One thing is for sure though, this game clearly knew how to eat up your quarters back in the day at the arcades. 
Alongside the standard gameplay mode for each build of the game, then it also features what's called the challenge mode. I wouldn't say it adds a huge amount to the gameplay, honestly, but it's essentially a version based on the arcade, so think limited credits, and then you can only choose a maximum of two enhancements. This is a mode that will take some dedication to overcome, but you're really going to get the best bang for your buck here if you do come in with the intention of one day beating the game on a single credit, something I am currently far, far away from. Overall, for gameplay though, look, I have very few faults with the core game. In fact, I had a blast, and as someone who grew up on Strider, it's great to get to visit this game because it's clearly an evolution of the idea. I am all for ports of cool classics as well, especially those that never did get a home release back in the day. Visually, Cannon Dancer Osman is stunning. The pixel work on display in the 90s was some of the very best in my opinion, and it very much follows the straighter feel of massive sprites, acrobatic looking animations, flashy attacks, and then even bigger special attacks as this player just flies all over the screen. You know, often you are encountering as well, and then screen filling enemies. Occasionally, it can get a little too wild on screen, and you may lose a little track of what is occurring, but that is very much a minor complaint. However, the game is just incredibly well realized, especially in its spin on a futuristic cyberpunk world. The cutscenes then are simple but effective, with talking heads and then some basic, I guess, set up some very like simple animations. Naturally, as a port of a retro game, Cannon Dancer Osman comes with a slew of visual options. The game features multiple screen size presets. I would recommend those using the borders to the left and the right of the screen, although you can stretch it to widescreen should you prefer. It also includes a single wallpaper for each build that can hide the black bars if desired. Additionally, you can add a CRT filter with a wide variety of options such as curve and intensity, although personally, I do prefer a crisp look for gameplay. The only visual problem I found was actually with the menus. They're just the lackluster with a basic still image design and boring text that looks like something you might put together in Microsoft Paint. The audio in Cannon Dancer Osmond is very much a product of its time. The sound effect field is extremely limited and in cutscenes then it can be quite jarring as the game is near silent even though there's actually a lot happening on screen. However, the music and the attacks, they fare much better. The futuristic soundtrack is upbeat, adding to the intensity of the action. And then although the attacks are limited, they do carry weight and reinforce just how quick our lead is. Overall, I've had a great time with Cannon Dancer Osman on the Nintendo Switch, and it's great to see a port of a game that's become a cult classic, but it's pretty much nearly impossible to find. That said though, the price point, you need to factor this in. At $30 or your original equivalent, it feels a little overpriced for what you are getting. A single run will take less than 30 minutes, and that is something you need to keep in mind. At this price, it's really designed for those willing to dedicate time to beating it with a single run, and then experimenting with cheats and enhancements because that will keep you coming back for a longer time. For many though, it may be too expensive and waiting for a sale would make more sense. Where this release would have really benefited, in my opinion, is just with the effort put into the port itself. The game itself is more than fine, it's just give us some history, maybe a digital art book or even a music player. Anything at all are just not so bare bones. Many games need to look at examples such as the Castlevania Collection and Contra Collection to see how you do this the right way. Still, look, I think it is a great time and with that in mind, I am giving it a great 8 out of 10 and I think retro fans should give it some serious consideration. Alternatively, wishlist it and wait for that price drop. So will you be checking this one out then? Let me know in the comments with that. Hit subscribe, join us here for reviews, deals, lists and news daily. And I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.